and welcome to this episode of What a Horse, and look what Jerry Williams drug in. <laughs> Hi, friends. <laughs> hey, Ch friends. <laughs> this is Chase Williams. Jerry, look at Chase, you take us. You take us to commercial. In just a few words from our sponsors, we'll see you in just a minute. <laughs> Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. Okay, I do have a couple announcements and then we're going to get started. Uh, Heart of Champions is Thursday night the 25th in Shelbyville, Tennessee at Champions Arena. You can call Marcy Allison, 931-639-2518. Showtime is 5 p.m. Judge is Lane Leverett. Then Friday night the 26th, Marshall County Horseman Show. That's always a good one. Call Wayne Dean, 931-703-9547. Jamie Bradshaw is the judge, which is also a celebration judge. Yep. That'd be a good show. Start time is 6 p.m. Then Saturday night, red carpet in Pulaski, Tennessee. Contact Pat Ford. Number 931-478-0528. Start time is 6 p.m. and the judge is Scott Beatty. So that 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 will be a good show too. They're going to be all three good shows. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm looking good. forward to serving as the organist for the Heart of the Champion show. Hey, they uh, they really do a lot of good work here in Bedford County. Well, Marcy does a whole lot over there, and this right here, the kids. That's what this is for, is for mm -hmm. the cheerleaders down at uh, Cascade School, and Marcy's always jumping in and helping. She helps with all the flat shot shows, the, mm -hmm. a, a lot of the performance shows, does a lot. I think she's still looking for sponsors, so that's a great opportunity to get in that's and support, support secondary education sports here in Bedford County, so y'all give her a call. Call her, quick. I do want to point out that we have, we have lab diamonds now. Have y'all seen them? Oh yeah. You, you need to see them. Let's roll this. If you don't know how to ask, let diamonds do the asking for you. You can now get the same chemical, physical, and optical properties as mine diamonds with lab-grown diamonds. They are graded the same standards as mine diamonds because they are grown by the same process as cultured diamonds through two methods, high pressure, high temperature, and chemical vapor deposits in a controlled area. 
These diamonds are as real as mine diamonds, possessing the same chemical and physical properties. The one major difference is time. Lab diamonds can be grown in weeks to a few months, reducing the cost while providing the same quality. We're going to be doing these at a good price. Believe me. I promise. I mean, lab, lab grown diamonds are the new rage right now. I mean, they are diamonds. They're not moissanite. They're not CZs. And when you look at a four carat natural mine cut diamond, pear shape, cushion cut, mm -hmm. you're talking forty, fifty thousand dollars for a four carat. You know, this That's actually real. puts diamonds affordable in price. So. Jerry, I just think that you get with these wives and stuff like that, and coming up with all this stuff. So now we got to spend more money. Remember, viewers. Your your wife's name was first in the hat. <laughs> I mean, remember, remember, De Beers is almost saying what they really mean. Diamonds. <laughs> Render her speechless. <laughs> what they're really saying is diamonds. That'll shut her up until she wants a bigger one. And then you come see Jerry, and he'll get, he'll take care of you. That's it. Diamonds say it best. They always do. Ask my wife. All right. We're gonna we're gonna talk about some. Here's some topics we're gonna talk about. Uh, the USDA through the years. Now, th this is some different things that they've done through the years. They came up with a rule of no showback. Now, they did this, no showback, and we all know this because they would turn a horse down. Yes. 15, 20 minutes later, that horse come up to go into a different class, mm -hmm. and they'd pass him. Yes. So they say, well, we're, we're just not going to have no show back. And then they uh, later on, when we complained about that, what did they do next? Granted a second opinion. Mm -hmm. And what was funny is when they couldn't agree on the second opinion, they'd get in a heated discussion like that right there. Yes. So they said, well, we ain't going to do that no more either. So what I'm pointing out is what we have gone through for years. That was the second opinion. Well, let's talk about that no show back rule. Yeah. Okay, so what's going on right now is per prior to the Chevron Doctrine being overturned, right. departmental agencies have broad deference in the rules that they put out, okay? So nowhere in the HPA does it say, nowhere in the regs does it say that if a horse is turned down at the celebration on the first night, that that horse can't show back. The USDA arbitrarily did that. Yes. And the issue is our industry is like, well, if we just go along to get along, then they'll back off. And over the course of the years with the no show back rule, then they arbitrarily say, okay, we're going to give a second opinion. That started the year that honors showed. Right. Okay. And it, so that's when Aaron Reimer was a VMO and not in an administrative job. And he and Baker got into it at least three times. We recorded it. That's right. Because we, <laughs> we were both there that year. So well, we just showed that video. Well, yeah. you, you, <laughs> that was that was Reimer in there no, that, and Emily yeah, Baker and, and all of and, them. And uh, Cesar and Sutherland. Right. So the the issue is ultimate power of enforcement lies with two entities. It, it relies with the federal government. It also relies with show management. Right. Show management has the authority to say. Yes. You know what, uh, Dr. Williams, I appreciate your opinion, but I disagree because my DQPs have cleared this horse. I'm going to allow this horse to show, but he's got to come back through inspection. And if we find something post-show, then we'll deal with it then. People need to know what their constitutional rights are, and they, you, you need to stop taking what the government says at face value. You're an American citizen, you're a taxpayer, and you have a right to enjoy your hobby and stop letting them steamroll you. Well, we've been, we've been pushed and shoved, I think, now with what's going on. We finally file a, file a suit. We're going to be battling. All right, we're moving on. During the process of all this, we have faced all kinds of hurdles. One of them was the USDA using the thermography. Improperly. And we all know, look, now she's got on a coat jacket because it's cold. Yes. You're supposed to use the thermography in a controlled area something they never did, but they would use it to tell us something was wrong with our horse. Well, on that, if, you know, we, the industry bought 
the same thermal cameras that the government uses. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the instructions, it clearly says that the horse has to be acclimated to the ambient temperature of the environment because Perfect. simply walking a horse across a pavement, across a gravel driveway, exactly. it's going to draw heat up into the into the foot and in the thermography was supposed to originally be used as normal not normal and if it wasn't normal then that would cause for an additional inspection but we had vmos that didn't even have the camera on going i don't think i'd go through you know which vmo i'm talking about yeah, oh yeah and making kids cry so it's just another tactic that they use to terrorize people all right refuse to allow people to video their inspections well now we went through this when when you was helping video, we had to put up with, like right there, you're in the door. Yeah, I, sh I shot that video. Yeah, you shot that video. <laughs> and moved, they would see where you are, and then they'd move in front of you. And this is the way it went. They, they didn't want us to see what they were doing. They hid it from the public. They even went so far as to... Yeah, he was... They, in this video right here, he yeah. was actually saying, we need you to back out. And then he's videoing me backhanded like this. Yeah. So I had to actually get down between Lurch's legs here yeah. to get a shot of when they were pulling the hairs back. Well, those are yeah. some of the things we went through. But the whole time, everything we did, they would try to block us. So we went to Nashville and got a video log for Tennessee and caught them first time right out of the hoop. We, we caught what they were doing, videoed them with them using the thumb in the pocket and all this. We've shown that a million times. But what I really, and I enjoyed doing this, I really did. At the Ag Center, we was over there doing a show. The law had been passed, it was in place, and they taped off the whole Ag Center all the way around to where you could not get anywhere close to where they were actually inspecting the horse. People had to walk There's all the Dr. way Baker around. right there going, no, yeah. you can't video, you can't yeah. video. However, when I called the police on them, then it got a little different because once I called the police, they were instructed on what they could do, what they couldn't do, and right there's the police officer, he's telling them that they will either bring them horses up there where I am, or I'm coming in there where they are. And when they said I couldn't do that, they were reminded that Bedford County and the city of Shelbyville owned the property where that ag center mm -hmm. was, not the USDA. Yes. So for the rest of the night, they had to bring them horses up there where I was videoing, mm -hmm. which served them right. I mean, they're the ones that did. They caused people walk all the way around the building. Well, with that law that you helped write and get passed, th that strengthened a right from the Fourth Amendment that owners already had. It was unconstitutional for the USDA to Walking say, because we wouldn't have been able to get, as you're seeing right now, now this is News Channel 5, but you can clearly see in this video that's showing right now, the shenanigans that were going on. And this is News Channel 5. They wouldn't even let News Channel 5. Dr. Baker right there yeah. threw them out. I know. He made them the leave. Would not let them watch the videos or, or watch the inspections or video the inspections. Now, this, this is what makes me upset about the mainstream media. They could be doing this and explaining to people what we went through. Mm -hmm. But they don't. Yes. They pick up the worst thing they can and they exploit it, talking about everything that we do, and the majority of it's a lie. They were there, they saw if the if the government and the VMOs were inspecting horses properly, why would they want to object? Damn video them. Well, I, I can tell you why that is. And it starts off with Kevin Shea. Yeah. I mean, we, we have Freedom of Information Act records that show that any time that we send an email to the administrator, the deputy administrator, it might be two or three days before there was a response. But yet when people like Keith Dane and Wayne Purcelli and that radical animal rights on the right and the left were emailing Director Shea, they were getting responses within 24 hours, even sometimes same, you know, same afternoon. That's right. So what that tells me is agriculture has been completely overrun by the radical left, 
It's been completely overrun by the radical animal rights agenda. They're, they're messing with the food supply. And this is just a small snapshot of how bad it's actually gotten at USDA. It is. It's a small snapshot. It's like everybody runs them except who's supposed to run them. Correct. Well, yeah. my opinion is every year, every other year, they have someone that calls a disturbance in the USDA. Mm -hmm. If you look at all the ones that you we didn't show on that, they are not there. But now they got a new group of people that's calling a new disturbance. And we went through Johnson. That's over there. Yeah. And, and things he would do. We went through other people out there like Sutherland and what but, he would do in Baker. Right. And now we got McHenry and and Amy Adams. Adams. We've got them all. Each one of them, McHenry is the one that snatched the reins out of a lady's hand and threw them back at That's her. That's assault. Why was the? I mean, I'm sorry, but why was? Okay, number one, when you're dealing with the USDA, local police don't have that jurisdiction. You've got to call a sheriff's deputy. Yep. You got to call a sheriff's deputy. Why did nobody? step up and call the sheriff's department because Candy Green got assaulted by a federal employee. I know. And assault doesn't have to, I mean, you could do that and that's assault, but yeah. I could also say, get it, get this under control. Yeah. It's, it's assault is defined by is any action or spoken or physical that would cause a person to be in harm or distress. Yes. Well, funny you should say that because they sent an email two hours before the show started explaining all the different changes in the inspection area that they that. were made, being made that would be considered assault. Verbal, even ponytail, stuff like this. In other words, if you walked up there and, and did this and asked them a question, yeah, they, they could they charge could, you with assault. So, that's right. But they can do that and nothing's done about it. But yet, I mean, I, I wonder if we've got the video on it, but, but, but Kerry McHenry can grab reins out of someone's hand and throw it up at someone's chest, and that's okay. Oh, and yeah. that's okay. Yep. I mean... But it, she, that's not the only one. She, she did one about the uh, a guy about 18 inches, telling him 18 inches, 18 inches. All of this, and, and a horse is going to move around. You 18 inches away, Right there, is Candy is. Yeah. yeah. Watch what she does. So, so the horse moves his head over, and I guess he smacks Dr. McHenry in the face with a bit shank. Now, Candy's doing exactly. She put her head under the horse. Yeah. Now watch. Here it comes. Candy's explaining. She's got her hand up. That this is aggressive behavior. And she's standing there holding the horse's foot, like, and the horse is going, "What's going on, folks?" Well, I mean, there ain't nothing wrong with a horse. You can no, tell that. No, nothing wrong with this horse. But it, but it's. She see, right tries, here it is. Yeah, there it is. She tries to. She tries her best to cause a conflict. That's what she well, said to her. Well, the whole time she's holding that, she got that horse's leg up. That horse yeah. is standing on three legs. That's a 1,200 pound animal that's yeah. standing there on three legs right there. And you gonna tell me that well, you? You can see by Dr. McHenry's body language that she is aggressive, she mm. is condescending to a taxpayer. I mean, this is a taxpayer. This, I mean, when you work for the federal government, you're supposed to have conduct that is beyond reproach because you are a representative of the full weight, might, and power and glory of the United States government. You know and the, that is unacceptable. The main word you said there? What? Suppose. Well, I mean. Because <laughs> they don't pay attention. They want rules that they want to enforce, but they want to take a rule and twist it. They want to turn it, it's just like the HPA. If they, when, when the, they called Homeland Security and FBI on me one year, they said that I was threatening them at the celebration. And when it was the meeting, I was told, well, what they want you to do is, is back off the way that you're describing what they're doing. And I, I told, told them, get them over then. it. Yeah, I told, I told them, them get then. over it. Hey, I told them exactly. This is exactly what I told them. I said, well, you can tell Gibson that when they start inspecting horses properly, then I'll calm it down. But until then, I'm, <coughs> I'm speeding it up. And I did because they weren't. They got a video on their website explaining how they inspect a horse. But when you lead a horse up to them, that that's not, not what they, what they do. do. No, you, you I mean, they don't. At Woodbury, I watched Amy Adams take her thumb and do like this. Right. And You're pinch, not the up only skin, one that saw it. pinch up skin, cause the horse to bleed. 
and then turned the horse down. And I'm going, that is, that is a violation of the law. That is intentionally inflicting pain on an animal, and that is against the law in Tennessee. She should have been arrested for it. Well, she should, but we, we do not follow the laws the way we should. And we allow them to do what they want to. But I'm, I'm a firm believer when they come in and start creating violations that they are in effect fixing a horse show because this is competition. This is a show. Mm -hmm. you're, at, you're wanting your horse to be the best. And when they start turning down horses like they did one on Jerry yeah. for having a field scar below his knee, then we're getting completely out of hand. We're not even close to the HPA. So that's why I'm suggesting everybody. There's well, okay. They call that horse out. That is not a violation of anything. No. That's not an open lesion. That's not an open wound. There's no edema. There's no blood. There's no nothing. But they turned a the horse down. For yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, Amy Adams turned a horse down for a, for a girth rub underneath. I, I mean, that's not in the HPA. And and we as an industry need to stop. The government says, "Well, we're going to do this." Our attitude needs to be prove it. Hey, prove it. They, they can't prove it, and they, that that's, that's why. The point. That is why when they did away with these administrative judges, it puts a whole new light on how they have to prosecute us. Now they really do honestly have to show some evidence. Well, they can't just say, hey, because I said so. They have to show evidence and they can't do it. Right here. That is not an HPA violation. No, why was that horse that turned is down? One, that is one of the 29 horses that they did biopsies on. They did 29 horses, did biopsies on them, 58 negative biopsies came back. Because they didn't have a scar. They didn't have no scar. I mean, and the scar rule really is a misnomer. It just it needs to be called the inflammation rule. It needs because, to be called something besides what they're calling it. Yeah, well, well I mean, there's, there, there's no way, okay, most gated horse shows, what it's saddlebreds, walking horses, whatever, you're in the arena for no more than 30 minutes if it's a big class. Mm -hmm. There's no way that you can pass inspection pre-show, three classes before you show, and mysteriously a scar comes up on a horse's foot. Oh. I, I can tell you one better than that. We got a gentleman that he, he's no longer with us, but he was a legend. He served four years suspension on a horse that never missed a single show. That's right. Never missed a show, but that man right there, Billy Gray, served four years suspension on a scar rule on a horse that never, that never missed showing and retired a multi-time world grand champion, yep. multi-time champion, but still that did not stop this gentleman right here from serving four years for something that they wanted to call a scar. Well, with the Chevron deference being overturned, if I were currently serving a suspension, I would be talking to my attorneys to find out, is there a way that this can be reversed? Because or overturned. between the, the Supreme Court saying that you can't rely specifically on administrative law judges to prosecute for these crimes. You actually have to go to federal court and then the Chevron deference being overturned. This is a very big thing because the evidence that the USDA gathers in the inspection area, you, is you, flawed. You, you might get reasonable suspicion, the first standard, to establish some probable cause, but you're not going to get to clear and convincing, and you're absolutely not going to get to beyond a shadow of a doubt because you're dealing with an animal that has a mind of its own. That's right, plus the fact that we, they, they've never, even though they were told by a court of law, due process, they've never granted it. And, and they have to do that. I yeah. mean, you well, know, in, in, my, in my perfect world, you know, pre-show, the horse shows no matter what, and if there's a question, the horse comes back through inspection when the horse is done showing, and if there's That's an it. issue, if there's an issue, then the penalty is harder because you did in fact show a non-compliant horse. Yes. But to turn these horses down flat out the gate, you're denying people their due process and you're devaluing their property. Right. So as an industry, we, if the government says we have an idea, we just need to go, no, you're not just gonna spring this on us. We're gonna change it. Well, let's watch some horses that did make it through some Christmas in July. That was a good show. That was, was a good show. They had a great show. 
I, you know, this kid right here just tickles me. She'll ride anything. I believe. And just loves I told it. her dad. I said, "Do not take that young lady to a rodeo. You'll look up and she'll be out there on one bull." Be, that's right. She'll be on one right bull. And when in buckles. <laughs> yeah. But she she is something. She showed in the equitation class at at the show for Christmas in July on Elle's predicted storm. But that's not the only time she showed that in equitation that weekend. And I will say this, if you ever watched her when she is watching something going on like shoeing or something. Oh yeah, she's she's paying attention hey, now. She's she, paying she attention. In there. I tell you what. It's another good horse. Can't this horse right him. here. That's a good <laughs> horse right there. Bob Adcock, he, he can pick the horses, buddy. A kingpin, 15, two and under. He's a piece of work. He is a piece of work. Bob's a good jockey, though. I mean, you got you to gotta say. Oh, yeah. Bob's a good jockey. Jay, if we'd known you was going to be here, we could probably have some video of you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to see video of me. Mm. Hadn't won nothing yet this year, <laughs> you know, but, but there's still yep, time. But there's I've, still I've time. seen you out there. You had some good stock out there. I appreciate right, that. Right here is Jose Showoff and Caress Heineman. Now, Caress is a good rider. Yes, yeah, I buddies. really like this horse. I like how fluid he is. He's heads up, ears forward, enjoys his job. I'm, I'm, a, I'm big on ears. Ears got well, well, Tommy, Tommy picked that one out. Yeah. Nancy told me, said Tommy, Tommy is one that looks at these horses and gets them. But now Caress, now she's she's a good rider. Now Down Tommy has been around this horse business for a pretty good while, for a long well, he, time. He knows what he's looking he knows for. What he's what looking he's looking for. Out That's looking. right. What we got next? More videos. <laughs> you got them coming. You, I sing Dixie. She'll be showing, I know, at least six to eight times during the celebration, maybe I mean, more. Allie Joe is, is one of our up and coming rising stars in the 11 and under division. You know, in that song, I Sing Dixie, an old Buck Owens song. Yeah. Well, she'll, she'll show in every class if she can. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing that gets me with her is she got two or three different trainers. Mm hmm. And every training wants you to ride different, and yep. she can fix herself she, she to way herself. to where she she rides, and she does it good. I kind of think maybe the other trainers are adjusting themselves to Ali Joe, because how could you tell her no? <laughs> how could you tell her no? <laughs> I don't Uptight know. Jose, that's all, that's always I, been a good one. Oh yeah, I, he's tough. He continues. Even the lady that uh, does our YouTube channel in, in Atlanta. She, she told me, she said, I like that uptight Jose. We're getting more and more people interested in this horse. I mean, if you take this horse and actually let people see it, touch it, and Jerry's done this with yeah. school days and stuff, you take a padded horse out into the public and they actually see it up close, yep. they want one. That's they, right. All of the negative connotations that they've been told completely fall away when they actually see well, one in person. They'll tell you, this ain't what I was told. I tell you, I'm, I love this mare here. Yes. Now, this mare showed twice. Showed once in the amateur division and, and then in the open. But showing Again, twice at a show. Eyes bright, ears up and right. forward. She's having, that mare's having more fun than Josh is. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I mean, but of course, now, her Carol, sire was Carol nice. does a great job of showing yeah. him, showing her, too. But I love a good mare. Oh, I do, too. They're underrated. I mean, our mares are so underrated, and they're amazing athletes. Well, you know, they said Billy the Kid's favorite horse was a mare. Mm. Said no one ever found out his name because he just said, this is my baby mare. Right there is Cousin Bob. That's a good horse there, too. Mm -hmm. Shane does a good job with this horse, yeah. too. I'm sure he'll be showing several times at the celebration. Young trainers, 35 and under. Yeah, that's a class Tanner. I never got to show in. 35 and under? Yeah, I'm 40 this year, so I got to show in the <laughs> experienced trainers class if I ever show a again. I might. You never know. Can't ever tell. Can't ever tell. I tell you what, now, he, he does a good job. It's been a long time since I've been 35. <laughs> My honeybee. Oh, you just turned 36, Jerry Hush. <laughs> Right there, that's My another honey. one of these mares. I, I'm oh, that's a good mare right there. I like there. a good mare, and we've got a bunch of them 
And that my honey bee, I guarantee you, she is one of them. And I know Molly really likes that mare. That mare consistent. Oh, she, I mean, she is. sits up in the brown, use it back in good. Got a great neck. Well, you can time you watch that, man. Yeah. yeah. Amateur lady is bears and gilding. That's just a good mare, period. Mm -mm -mm. Consistency, that's what I like about her. Every time you look at her, she's doing that same, same lead, that same gear. Get it and go. Get it and go. Right here is Harley Quinn. This was a reserve in that class. And this is a world champion. The well, Honey Bee is too, but that, this right here is a world champion. And Beth, you ever met Beth? I have not. Oh, not man. that I know of. I may have. She, she is ex-military. Her and her husband both. Fine, I thank them for their right. service. That's right. I thank her all the time. She's just a fantastic person. She during celebration, she'll get up every morning, come over here just to well, see, liven I, up the show. I like how this mare walks behind. I mean, oh, she's she's hitting, she's hitting her heels on all four corners like you want one to, driving, pushing, reaching good, ears up, forward. That's that mare got that old timey walk. Yeah, I mean, yeah. shake and walk yeah. all over. I mean, getting it done is what she's doing. Yeah. Right here is honored in Texas. He was a bad cat, buddy. He, 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 he looks like he a big-time horse. Yeah, like he him. is. He is something else. It's going to be hard to beat come celebration time. I believe you're right. I tell you, Mr. Bob, he loves them horses now. He loves the horse shows. This past weekend, they had the fair horse show, and I looked up, yeah, and, had, Bob and, and Michael Bob yeah. was there at the, at the um, fair horse show watching the, watching yeah. the kids ride around. I mean, you had a few of them over there at the fair show. Yeah, mm-hmm. That was a fun horse show to play. Was, that was my very first professional horse show for Judy Gamble was playing the Bedford right County Fair. Right here is paddock master now, right here, Kenny. We uh, we didn't have great video of him over there, so, but I also went back and looked at Columbia. Yeah. Now Columbia, he, he's good here. Oh yeah. Well that track was a little soft. Well, everything's different, but now, his, earlier this year, right there he is. Kenny just, Kenny's, Ken, Kenny's a big supporter. Yeah. And don't ever count out Kenny Smith. He will come no, to an no. AOT class <laughs> and whip your butt. In a heartbeat, buddy. He just go. And right here, everybody better watch for this one right here, Big John Coffin. Oh, yeah. This horse, horse is going to wear the big roses one day. I believe he is, too. Remember, I said it. Canner's pretty. He just, he, he, he is a walking horse. Mm -hmm. He just gets it done. He, he's got, he's got everything going for him. I'm glad to see Justin Harris back showing. Yes. Justin work hard at it now. Yes, he does. He does. He, he works you know, one it. year, he, he had several horses out there, but he was working them at night when it was cooler because yeah. it was so hot yeah. during the day. I do that too. Right here is Bo Cephas and Robert Nims for Beth Beasley. That's a pretty animal. Mm -hmm. Sure is. You know, he would do real good in one of those, uh, the international, they have, it's for model horses, but it's like a lead coat class, it's uh -huh. an in hand class. Because he, he has good movement to him. Yes, he does. You know, in, in a model class, the movement doesn't matter. It's all about the confirmation. But it's nice yeah. when you have one that has the whole that package. That has a good move, good so motion. As a halter trainer, I can pick a good one. That's a good one. Well, a lot of, a lot of times, the, the model horses don't walk all that great. But now that right there moves good. Mm -hmm. he, he's got everything going for him. And he's pretty. Yeah, he's he pretty doesn't old. love a Palomino flax and mane and tail. Switchblade FSM. This is a bad cat. <laughs> yeah. She gets better and better on that horse every mm -hmm. time you see her. She gets stronger. Jake I mean, told me that she, she works on her strength. So that, that's a whole lot of horse she's on there. But yep. you know, that horse takes care of that kid. Oh, yes. That, that, that horse is like Ally Joe is my human. 
Well, after this video, I think we're gonna. I tell you what, she just every time you see her, she's nice horse. better and yeah. better. She's been good his whole life. And that's not oh, yeah. the only pony she's got. Oh no. She got a whole barn full over him in her <laughs> bro. I called over. Her dead. No, nah, her dead. Right here. Right here. Big enough. I think he's big enough. Hey, yeah. That I think that Jerry Williams is one said like a oh, sewing so machine. machine. Yeah, that's yeah. what I call him. Oh, sewing machine. I mean, every time you look at him, that head pecking, and he's just he's get getting along home. with it. You know, I tell you, watching the Beasley twins grow up in the horse business, and you know they they've become such great little you know equestrians. Hey, we've watched them sit to the lead line. Yeah. And they're grown young ladies right now. They they can get it all, make some fantastic cookies. That's yeah. Jerry Williams. <laughs> so are they, are they going to take right, this? Do, do your thing, baby. Well, I think we're going to take a quick commercial break and hear a word from our sponsors because we don't need the money, but the people they owe need the money. A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro. 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry. World Grand Champion Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000. Or select Amateur Show Pleasure World Grand Champion El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these World Grand Champion stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another world grand champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. I fell in love with Tennessee from the second that I saw it. From the beautiful rolling hills to the beautiful rivers and streams, the ecosystem and the wildlife are awesome here. But it needs constant care, and that means picking up litter and trash every single chance you get. It's totally polluting the ecosystem, totally polluting the natural resources, and it's a big hazard for our local wildlife. Please join NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and join me in keeping Tennessee beautiful and keeping this part of our great legacy. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. All right, we're going straight to some more horses. Buddy Tree Classic. You got it. As she Ain't he grand? There she is again. She does those equitation, buddy. I think we can conclusively say he's grand. Yeah. Mm hmm. Ain't he grand? And Ali Joe Jacobs. I tell you, he's a, he's a good horse. Eli does a good job on yes, he does. On riding. I'm going to tell you, every time you see Eli ride, he keeps getting better and better. And I mean, he got a different horse now he ride to. That right there I mean, was a great class. Mm -hmm. But now he's he's another young man that's that ride and love them horses. I believe he can ride all day if he could. Well, he'd get on one, off one, on another. Yes, right. 
he was in there in this class with Allie Joe, and she was reserved. Now that's, a, that's a, he rides. He got a good that's horse. Good. good right there, tea time, Charlie. But I believe this one's going into the show pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see that. Hey, he's a pretty horse. Yeah, he is. Every kid's dream of flax and mane and tail. Yeah, that's it. Her, her dad called one Sunday and I said, what are you doing? He said, well, she's got her fourth horse out now. They was at the barn. <laughs> she was going down the line. Nice horse. Hey. Right here's a gin to win. Right here's world champion, world grand champion. Mm -hmm. That and won different divisions. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now in the show pleasure division. So piece of work, buddy. Yeah, I like that, that our horses can can go in different divisions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, Cash for Keeps wins the yep. World Grand Championship and then comes back and wins the Light Shot World Grand Championship. Yep. And that yep. just goes to the versatility. That Jim wins a good horse. Great the Tennessee walking horse actually is. I'll tell you what, they're hard, and, and Kendra, she, she's a peach. No matter how you look at it, she's a peach. And here's first night out, and Allie Joe. This is something else about Allie Joe. She wants flat shots, she's showing model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's showing the lead line, shows this. That's what I'm saying, she got different horses that she riding, and she got to know exactly how to sit in there. I mean, that's a lot for, for a kid. It is. To do. She pulls it off. Well, she works at it, though. I mean, she, and, and I know people probably get tired of me saying that, but to me, that is the number one thing with our kids. If they're doing something like this, it's just like my two grandkids. I've got two of them that love archery, and they work hard on the archery. They're not even in competition now, but my grandson went to practice yesterday. My other granddaughter's softball. She's all the time wanting to take batting practice. Well, me. They need something. They're gonna get good at what they practice. Right here. Now here's a mare. I love them mares, but yeah. right here, and you talking about a team. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. Hey. I right tell you, that juvenile is class is gonna be a... Oh, oh, oh. Both of them, the 12 through 17 and the 11 and they're gonna yep. be top classes. This, this has been one of the best years for 12 and under and 12 to 17. I'm, you, I'm, I like it. Mm -hmm. It's the future of the breed. Yeah. Our youth is something, I mean, the youth competition is tougher than the adult, adult competition. Yeah, that's right. Everybody going out there buying that good one for the kid to show. That's it. Look at that right there. Oh, that right there is a piece of work. And right here, I don't care what, no, I love it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he's got a big way of going about him. Oh, well, well he, he, he's an eye catcher. Uh-huh, he's flashing. Yeah, when he comes in, you see him, and you keep going back to him. Well, the thing of it is every year you can see a change in his horse. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's always getting better. Better and better. And he, look, I mean, ears up forward, he's painted, you know, that's a happy horse. He's having, a, that horse is having a good time. First time I seen this coat was at a coat preview. Yep. Over there, it was a rising star at the end, but it should creep down, but it was over there when they had that coat preview. Mm-hmm. Tell you what, it's hard. That right there is going to be hard to beat. Hey, yeah. And that's just the way it is. Right here is Cerveza. Right here, I've never understood how that horse can continue to get the last ribbon. I talked to Debbie one day, and I told her, I said, don't you get tired. She said, well, she said, my goal is to get the last ribbon all year long. <laughs> I just. That's a nice now, horse. She right makes there. some fantastic she does. shows. Some great shows. And just. She get last, and you would think the work that her husband does that they'd treat her at least fair. But I think here upcoming, you'll see she'll start doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would see, I would say so. Right here. I like that horse. Now yeah. I do. 
He's going to be hard to beat. There might be one out there that can give him a run for his money. Well, you know, that's not there, Cavender. Yeah, Cavender's a good horse. Hey. Cavender is a nice horse, but you know, you've seen what, you know, Bobo's riding. I wouldn't oh, count yeah. him out. Bobo? Yeah. I wouldn't count the Dixie Outlaw out. I mean, it's going to be a good state class. I, I believe it's going it to be is. a good yeah. one. I truly do. I mean, you, you've got Cavender and Tim Smith. You've got Justified Honors, and if he wins this year, he breaks all the records. Robin and Bruce is some good people. Yeah, they are. They're, They're very good, good people. people. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a really good World Grand Championship class this year, one that people are going to want to come see. Yeah, because they, they want, they're going to want to see a show. Yeah, a show, and they will. Boy, it was so hot at Woodbury. Tell me about it. Cole Hahn. Uh, that's another horse yeah. I like, Cole hey, Hahn. Cole Hahn's a good horse. And I mean a, a good horse. He's just a pretty pony that loves his job. That's it. And that young lady, she loves to ride him. So she'll, she'll be showing, I know, six to eight times. Yeah. And that's just in preliminary competition. Yeah. Well, it's six in preliminary. But don't know how many world champion or world grand championships she's going to go for. I'd say every one of them because she's oh, yeah. going to go, Daddy. He's going <laughs> to go. Gonna okay. say, hey, Ed, we got to go. go but, I'm, but I'm telling you, the 11 and under class, the Daddy I Want class, you hey, won't sell a horse. Look, look here, ladies' privilege. Oh, I, oh I, yeah, I like that, this three-year-old. Missy and Tim have some good horses. Now they do. Thomas does a good job. Yes, he does. I like the way he presents a horse. Sit up. Sit up in the saddle. He doesn't, yep. he shows his horse. He doesn't care what's going on around him. He just puts yep. his horse on the rail. That's how it's done, folks. He's a good one. Mm hmm. You know, his mom and dad are proud of him. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The lady's privilege. And the hoss. This pony put on a show. For yep. a, yes, he did. I'm going to tell you, Allie Jo calls her grandfather one day. He told him, says, hey, I need to be relocated. <laughs> and he said, what? She said, I need to be relocated. He said, to where? She said, to the barn. Goes, I ain't having no fun here. <laughs> They're going to be relocated. And I'll tell you what, the hoss. Put on one well of a show. Oh, yeah. Oh, he did. Woodbury was a really good show overall. Yeah, it was. That bony class was tough. The second place horse, the country lineman, he made a well of a show. Yeah. BB and lineman had really come a long way. Man. Tell you what, them, them girls just, they tickle me because they, they're they always together, they're always cheering each other on. And everybody else. I, I mean, yeah. th I mean they, they are they the support. epitome of good sportsmanship. They just do. And so is Allie Jo. Oh, yeah. A, a lot of our youth riders are, are really good, have good sportsmanship. I believe sometimes they're a lot better sports than some adults. I agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, by <laughs> far. <laughs> Yeah. We, we could all learn a lesson from our young like riders. That's right. Kids. We sure could. There's no doubt about it. Look at there. My brother in arms. Married and gilded. Missy said that they had one gilded, and this one was the exception. So she loved that. That's that, a nice horse. Real gilded. nice. My brother in arms. I like that name. And he's sporty. I mean, he's pretty yes, he sharp. Yes, he's pretty. He can be. Geo and Bowie Williams. I was happy for Bowie. He didn't yeah. show much. He, he did. Glad he got every now and then, but. They let him show that horse, and he, he did a good job. Did a real good job. Missy, when Missy t tagged me and asked me if we could do one for that one, I said, yep. I said, we'll, we got video of all of them, so we'll put something together. 
Oh, boy, he's, he bought like a walking dictionary when he comes to the mares and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. He's getting I where call he the can, Walkopedia. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's getting where he can do it in the racehorse industry, too. Yeah. Yeah. And here's Spotlight on Jose 4G. And this is a good horse. Bye bye, cop. That is one tough horse. And now that one's one you can see a lot of difference. Oh, yeah. From mm-hmm. two year old to three year old. The maturity showing up. I get to watching these horses and, and I get so engrossed in watching them, you forget to say something about them sometimes. Right. I mean, it, it. I mean, that was a really good class. I mean, that yeah, was, was a, that was a step was a, off. That three year old yeah. stallions class was, I mean, Bill had to work at it. Yeah, he did. And won it, hands it down. No, it yeah. wasn't no gimme. No. And here's Jose's desperate man. She made, she really did make a great yeah. ride. Yeah, she really did. I mean, the, the competition over 4th of July week was deep. It was. No it was matter where deep, you went, yeah. it was deep. Yeah. From from the stick horse class to the state class, I mean, it was just the, the best of the best our industry has to offer. I mean, over 800 entries? Yep. Maybe a little more, give or take? 856, I think it was. Over four days? Yep. Wow. Yeah, and that's a testament to you know our industry and how dedicated people are to it. That it is. <clears throat> Here's Mr. Mr. Ford, Bar yeah. Real. All right, there's another. That's She's a really nice horse. Yeah. She could very easily be a trainer. I've <laughs> seen her show this horse all over different horse shows I've been the organist for, and she, the horse just gets better and better and better yeah. and better. Yeah, good horse. Mr. Bar Real. A lot of people don't give these deal for real offsprings. Oh, yeah. Especially the mares. Yeah. Now them the mares, when you make a brood mare out of one of them, and I've got one that we've just got two coats out of that both of them perfect. Yeah. We got a flat shot over it. I think Jerry just don't want to show us because he wants to make a brood mare out of her. <laughs> Jose, Here's it ain't champion. so. Jose, it ain't so at R.M. Kelly. And my Wheeling contender is by Jose, it ain't so, out of She's My Gold Digger, and her name is Sh- uh, Say It Ain't So. We call Where's her Sadie. Go on. Well, right here, this is the only horse to ever beat I Am Jose. Yep. I know. I remember when it happened. Yep. Uh, that was, was that was a good state class. Yep. It was, was a there. really good state class. Yeah, because, I mean, you you couldn't throw rocks at that second place horse because he is a bad cat, Jack. Well, they had some good horses in the, from top to bottom. I thought they were a little hard on Bill, but that's well, just me. Zaro Jr.? Yeah. I just think Zaro Jr. is something else. Mm-hmm. He is a good... Sam does a great job with him. So, yeah, the state class at the celebration. It's going to be good. It's going to be tough. I mean, and it's a wide open field, so, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, bring get them behind. On, bring, bring them on, bring them on. No, we're going to commercial. <laughs> During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I Am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live foal guarantee. Multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee walking horse champion. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. 
This is tax-deductible donation as fast as a 501c3. And be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. They work hard on putting that show on. Georgia, Florida Line, and Tim Smith for Robert Dort. You know, Robert is one of the nicest people I think I've ever met. Robert Dort's just a super guy. Yeah. Now, he really is. He, 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 he enjoys what he does. He enjoys watching his horses. He enjoys riding. He enjoys cheering other people on. Yeah, I, I know. Mean, he, just... he just has a good time. That's what it's all about. A red right horse? Hey. That was a nice horse. I hope I see Kim on this one in War Trace this year. Last year, she made a great show down at War Trace on this horse and won it. Rightly so. And he was a, he was really good over in Cornersville. Made a well of a show. That's a pretty thing, too. He's a big horse. Mm -hmm. And right here, Miss Stone Cash and Linda Botch. For Noel she made a good show. Yeah, I think she show. took that horse away from Noel. <laughs> <laughs> Wives and children, but that's what you got to watch for. Oh yeah, but she did. Now she made a good show on that horse. Really did. Should be proud. It done. Will right Hamm. here, Wilhelm and Dan Waddell for Missy Johnson. A good one too, buddy. That was Buddy Wilhelm's last bowl. Yep. That's gonna be a good horse. Oh yes, he is. Getting it done right there. We're ready to go now. <laughs> yeah. We got one minute for closing. So. Take it away, Jerry. Chase, I'm glad you come and sat here with <laughs> us and stuff like that and talk to us and with your well, knowledge. He said, he said, what do you mean he's coming? <laughs> well, it's kind of a, a kind of surprise special guest, I guess. But I'm glad to be here as always. I appreciate hey, you. It's always fun to have more people. Oh, yeah, the it is. Conversation gets good. To, everybody can say what they want, but. That's what it's all about. We got the champions Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lewisburg Friday night. Pulaski, Pulaski Saturday, Saturday night. night. And yeah. then next week's Fayetteville War Trace, and, and then the Splash Show, and we then Rockford the Celebration. Three good judges going to be this weekend. That's right. Yep. Well, you can't go to the champion show, though. No, can't go over there. I'm going to go watch, though. I'm going to go, gonna, gonna go watch, too. So yeah. He's got a lead line pony for Lane. Oh! <laughs> I'm going to well, watch. He said, no, nah, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> I don't blame it. Folks, we'll see y'all next week. Chase, thanks for coming. Not a problem. Always see you at the show. And we will all see everybody at Shelbyville at the Cal, not the Cal Sonic Champions, Champions Arena. Arena. Be safe. <laughs> Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner's circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winner's circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.
Thank you.